what's your can i can we get a little technical i love uh you know whether that be you know whether while well, your time at larabee or the current I, I love tech in the aspect of music related tech and stuff so like what are you particularly mixing on what do you do a lot in the box out of the box plugins man share whatever you feel comfortable sharing because i just i love this is a selfish question because i just love learning about this stuff and hear what other people use yeah, absolutely. Um, back at Larrabee, it was a really, really unique situation because every mix was an analog mix on a desk. Every mix. And so it was... On like a Neve or SSL or...? SSLs, yeah. There were, yeah, there were three SSLK consoles. It still are, and a couple of dualities as well. Um, and so the unique challenge of working in that world is you have to take these modern productions, mm -hmm. right? People who are producing in the box, in their bedrooms, or, you know, in Nashville, on other consoles. Basically, you're taking other people's sessions and you are sort of adapting that workflow to an analog work, which is not easy. And there's no like one size fits all solution. Um, and again, because we're working, again, at Larrabee, we work at every different genre. I mean, we'd be working on a pop record in the morning, uh, a country record in the, you know, in the afternoon, and then like a hip hop trap record at night, you know? And so it was truly every spectrum of the, the of genre we saw. And so you're having to adapt, uh, you know, country music to, an, to, to our specific workflow versus trap versus, you know, like a Carrie Underwood record versus a, a Nessa Barrett record versus a Post Malone record, you know, and and that pr presents a, a unique technical challenge um, to be able to deliver consistently in every genre in, in an analog sort of workflow. Um, that's something that's unique to Larrabee and unique to what we did there. Mm -hmm. um, since I've left, my, my workflow is mostly in the box. Um, but when I track, it's really great to have hardware, um, especially on the way. And that's, that, that's so helpful, you know, tracking through a nice compressor or a nice EQ or a nice channel strip. Um, and if you're doing like a, like a full band session, you know, you've got like a, a bass drummer, a couple guitar players. Um, yeah, you, you, you need a console, you know, like it's, it's so it, it speeds up your workflow so much. You're able to do so much more on the way in so that there's less work down the line. And at the end of tracking, you have a better idea of what the final result will be mm. uh, because you have all that processing mm -hmm. available on the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I love it. And it's it's interesting because like, there's a constant industry debate of in the box, out of the box, half box, you know, whatever you want to call it. You know, there's so many, but yeah. it, it surprises me more and more because you hear a lot of these artists that necessarily have built a name maybe on like YouTube or something like that. You know, they're all like, you know, oh, like, or not even that. Let me rephrase that. I think so many artists want that out of the box, you know, like, like production. They, it's a dream, right? You just assume because you, you saw every artist going through that. But the more and more that I talk to these industry professionals that are doing hit tracks, like you work on a Post Malone or Ed Sheeran, or I see actually, and I want to touch on this after that fact that you, that Chris Geringer follows you on Instagram, that you know, Chris Geringer. Um, and I just had him on the channel. Actually, I just went over to his studio a couple weeks ago. Um, and I, I want to chat about that in a sec, but like he mixes everything in the box. And when I saw, I, I went to the studio, we were chatting about like the gear. I was like, oh, like, He's like, yeah, I don't use any of this. I do it all in all in the thing. I'm like, I'm like, this guy's thinking has like 16 Grammy nominations, and it's all in the box. And it's like, the more I actually get involved in the industry, I'm like, people don't care. It's these people. It's us that you know necessarily don't have access. If the grass is always greener, right? You know, you're like, oh, I'm you know recording on this. I wish I was recording on an S, uh, you know, 32 track SSL, you know, or whatever the case is. You know, so it's it is so fascinating. One of the biggest lessons I learned at Larrabee was. Um, the gear really doesn't matter. Mm. You know, I, I had I had come up. I, I mean, I, I was interested in mixing since I started. Like, I I love uh, the concept of taking something and making it sound radio ready. Mm -hmm. um, and so, for a long time, my mixes did not sound radio ready at all. They were, you know, I I play them up against things on the radio and I'd be like, why does my stuff sound horrible? And since working at Larrabee, uh, I, you know, I, I, along the way, I'd always thought, listen, like there are all these guys with consoles and with gear, and I don't have the gear, so it must be the gear that's that's 
responsible for that uh, disconnect there. So the, the gear must be responsible for, for my mix in that time. But working at Larrabee with all the gear, with the consoles, with, the, you know, we had racks and racks of outboard gear in all the rooms, I discovered that it's, it's really not about the gear. And that, that discrepancy between my mixes and the mixes that I loved by, you know, all these, like Manny and all these, you know, these legends, um, it, it really wasn't the gear. It's about taste and your ears. And getting to that finish line, that radio-ready mix, really, ha- it doesn't matter how you get there. People get there in, in lots of different ways. Um, but analog gear or whatever that secret vocal chain or what it's not that. It's your, per- it's your personal taste and your ears. And, I mean, I've done mixes with, with you know, tons of plugins and I've done mixes with, with no plugins, you know, with, with a couple here and there. And the result is, is something that I like, you know, and either way, whichever direction so I go. So when you say personal taste, do you mean the, you know, beauties in the eye of the beholder who's listening or personal taste of, you know, the mixer? Like, can you elaborate on that aspect? I, I guess just the mixer skill. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. What, what they consider to be good. And if they're if they're able to with their technical ability and and their ear their sense their ear sensibilities uh, to get there. Well, and ninety percent of the time, if you've been in the industry for thirty years, you're likely going to be better than artists that's been doing it for three years. You know, so yeah, that yeah, that that's, then that's... I love that. I think we need to say that ten thousand more times because every single artist on YouTube is like, I need to buy more gear, kind of thing, but. It's it's the no, truth. It's you just practice. Need to get better. Yes, thank yeah, you. Exactly. Thank you. Practice. Dude, I practice. I had when I first started recording, and I'll do a little quick story time for the people listening. I when I first started recording, I was like recording on some cheap microphone, and a friend of mine who'd been in the industry for years, like he was in a wedding band and stuff, like but he had like a decent amount of gear and stuff, like significantly older than I am. Uh, I was like he lent me his sick microphone. I was like, oh, I'm so excited to go record with this. Like, this is going to be so good. Like, this next single, I'm going to release this video. And it sounded like butt because I didn't know how to use it. You know, and actually the, the $45 microphone that I was using actually sounded better than this significantly more expensive microphone because I actually knew how, knew how to use it. I knew how to mix it. I had, and it's just that, that lesson for me that was years ago. I was like, it's not the gear. It's not, it's, it's how, it's my, my ability. You know what I mean? And, and the only way you do it is practice makes progress, right? I love that, man. I love that. That is so good.